can you talk about some of the, the the skills and some of the ways that people who might have you know are well aware of the <laughs> of the crises that are going on right now and yeah. want to do something about it like what what should they be sort of uh learning in, in, in an attempt to sort of like enter this space and 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 lend a hand Sure. I, I think, you know, the biggest thing that I've learned over the last uh, some years, I've been working in emergency response now for about uh, 17 years and, and building resilience in various communities and organizations and things like that, is that you can't build resilience uh, by by focusing on a single system. You mm-hmm. have to look at the holistic uh, system and all of its parts and all of the people that are engaged in it in order to really have lasting change. That takes a long time and it takes a lot of effort and it takes thinking creatively in order to understand what what the shared uh, and common ground might be to break through certain walls that maybe you know or don't know are there Mm -hmm. uh, that are impeding progress. Um, There's a lot of soft skill that goes into all of what we're talking about. You know, you could be the smartest person in the room, but if you can't communicate your idea and if you can't make the other person trust you, believe you, and then most importantly, take action on what you're saying, um, you could have the best solution, but it won't get adopted or at least it won't get adopted completely. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And I saw that a lot, you know, my, uh, at my previous role where I mentioned I was a technical risk communication specialist, I was the first person of that, that title in the office. And my background before that time was actually in marketing. Mm-hmm. And, um, I wanted to start bridging the gap between marketing, communications, PR, those types of fields, uh, which is where my more traditional experience came from. And the passion that I had, which was in the emergency response space and and specifically within technology. So I, I went to this office and I said, you know, look, you have all these great programs. You're 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 pen testing, you're uh, managing your your servers, your mm-hmm. there's there's so much that goes into, you know, all, all the people that are listening to this, you guys know there's so much that goes into your work. Um, the problem is you can do all of it and you could do it all a hundred percent well, but all it takes is the bad actor being right one time Mm -hmm. and all of it was for nothing or for one well-intentioned person to share a password or leave it on a a sticky note or, you know, get spear fished or whatever the the vector might be. Um, and, and all of it falls away. You can do everything right. Uh, all of the times prior to that, but all it takes is the one slip up and, and it'll go away. And you can't do it all by yourself. The, the fact is that most IT departments and most InfoSec or cybersecurity units are a small, small, small fraction of the overall workforce that we're mm-hmm. trying to protect. And so there's many more of them than there are of us. Um, so I went to this office and I said, you need to get more creative with uh, how you're approaching those people because they need to be on your team. You can't look at them as being uh, this otherworldly group or this stakeholder, this obscure stakeholder that you have to communicate to, but you have to bring them onto your team. You have to inform them and let them know what's going on. You have to humanize your brand and you have to then let them run with it and let them do what they do. Because it, And you have to believe right, that, that an educated consumer is a motivated one mm-hmm. and you have to believe that if you take that same logic that we steal from the business world, uh, that you can then use it to your advantage when you're trying to protect your networks or protect your people or protect your assets. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that showed up in a few different ways. We did a lot of like social media campaigning. Um, I designed um, actually a playing card deck with tips on every single uh, card face, which was mm-hmm. super fun. Yeah. Um, did a lot of events and speaking engagements and things like that and just coordinated this communications campaign the same way that you would as if preparedness was a product. Um, and you have to sell the idea of being prepared or of building resilience or securing your, your laptop, whatever it may be. You mm-hmm. have to sell that to the individual. Um, and, and using things like marketing and sales can help you do that. So there's this, this framework that I use a lot called the hierarchy of effects. And it basically communicates how people adopt things over time. And they go from being aware or unaware of a brand or a service or a product to then being aware of it. And then maybe they like or they dislike it. But then eventually, you know, you go through this whole framework that may take hours, minutes, days, weeks, years, whatever. Yeah. And eventually there's a decision that they have to make. They're either going to adopt what you're talking about and, and take action or they're not. And what we've noticed is that you can have marketing messages and sales messages shoved down your throat dozens of times, but until you reach the right message and until you've had it repeated by someone that you care about and trust, you're probably not going to take that action. So you take that and you apply the same knowledge, the same mindset uh, to preparedness, to resilience, to security, and now you have many more people on your team. 
How about some free cybersecurity training resources for you and your team? Just go to infosecinstitute.com slash free to get eBooks, training guides, and more than 100 cybersecurity training courses, all free for cyber work listeners. Go to infosecinstitute.com slash free and start learning crucial new skills today.